and welcome back. Now today we're going to consider what we do when our projects go wrong. That is, they're running normally, something happens, and you want to be told, don't you, that something's gone wrong. Yes, how are we going to do that? Yes, indeed. Now, as you know, in my projects, I have various error handling capabilities. Sometimes you get messages come up on the debug screen. Sometimes you have lights turn on. But just recently, I've included a new feature in my smart um, workshop heater controller over there on the wall. Um, basically, it says, um, what's the time? Is it after 5 p.m. in the afternoon? And is the workshop power still on? Because that idiot Ralph, forgetful that he is, has probably forgotten to turn it off and it sends me a message. And as you can see from that phone there, yes, it's a WhatsApp message. So how did I do it and how easy is it? And more to the point, how much does it cost? I want to give a big shout out to PCB Way, PCB prototype, the easy way. Now we're all well aware of the $5 for 10 pieces PCB, but I've got some real practical examples that I've ordered recently. Let's have a look at those. So here we have a very small double-sided panelized board that enables me to create a tiny little display unit. Look at that. How cool is that? And at the other end, look at this pond controller. Mains voltage, absolutely wonderful. That looks pretty cool too, doesn't it? And that's been running for some time now. Yeah, PCB Way has excellence in their PCB department, but that's not all they do. Look at this. Just look at their products and capabilities. Apart from printed circuit boards of all types, they do PCB assembly, double-sided, through-hole, surface mount, you name it, which means you can design a prototype for yourself or your company and have it assembled by PCB Way for the cost of the shipping. And if you want some 3D printing done, these are the people to do it for you as well. PCB Way. Why don't you try them out now? Now, although I've got an ESP32 on the workbench here, this can apply to any microcontroller that has an internet connection because the way you do it is to register your phone. And I'll come on to other options that there are available, but it's your phone you register to give permission for uh, signals to be sent to you, messages to be sent to you. And um, it's just, yeah, you just call a particular URL and address and Bob's your uncle. Now, since I've started doing this and playing about with it, um, he's started to change the way the message is delivered in, the, in as much that the message comes through fine, but there's a little tiny nag thing at the bottom saying, help, please pay something. But of course, I guess you don't have to, but uh, it's very, very cheap. And of course, the business options are actually very, very reasonable as well. So we'll discuss all that a little bit later on. But let's see how this works then. Now, as I say, I've got this um, already built in now to my smart heater controller. Um, let's just see how easy that was. It's only a few lines, really. OK, and I cribbed it, I think, from his web page anyway. His, who's his? OK, let, let's let's do that bit first then. So this is the page um, callmebot.com that tells you everything you need to know about this. Well, sort of. Um, I'll show you how it actually works in code in a minute. But this is the page that I'll put a link to down below and you can have a read and just see, you know, what you want and what you don't. Simple as that. Um, I, I was looking for his name. I say his. It could be a, a group, a family. Who knows? But anyway, he's doing this, as he says, as a hobby. And he's renting like server space on Amazon Web Services and things, um, which is why he's now put that little nag screen in. Um, we'll come back to all this, though. Back to the code. Now, we're going to talk about this code that you can see on screen in just one second, because that's the bit I'm actually using in my system down here. OK, and it's not secured and it's not encrypted. It's all in plain text because I just wanted to get something working. I thought I'll work on the encryption and then security at a later date. Yeah, which means basically never, but it's not going to be never. I will do it because I'm going to talk about encryption and security in the HTTP web pages for ESP32 series that I'm doing. Yeah, so this is the easy way to do it. And the reason it's easy is because you can you can put all this in a browser. I'll show you all that in a minute to test it and get it all working, which is what you want to do first, isn't it? But there's a version two of this code just underneath. So let's have a look at that. Right, this is the version 2 code. Now, if you notice here, the URL is just 
the URL now. We're not putting the data as part of the URL, which you would do if it were a GET request. So, for example, you might be saying to Amazon, um, Amazon.com slash product ID equals 1234. Who cares if that's encrypted or not? Nobody, all right? But when you're saying, Amazon, here's my payment details or whatever, yeah, you most definitely want those encrypted and secured to the best possible way. So what we're using here then is a post. Here you can see post. And all the payload, which is basically the data, and in this case, it's telephone number and the WhatsApp API key are going to be part of this payload. And they're going to be embedded in the body of this post. Now, this doesn't really help security in this way because we haven't got a secure client at the moment. However, we'll, we'll talk about security and secure clients and encryption and certificates in a future video as part of the ESP32 web pages series that I'm doing. That's a little way off though, um, and I want to get this simple and easy, and you can get it running and to migrate this to a secure system is going to be pretty easy, believe me, just a couple of lines of code, but I don't want to delve into all that right now. So for now, we're going to be talking about this bit of code. Yeah, not secure, not encrypted, but it works, and more to point, it'll let you test it with a browser. Okay, let's get on. This is it then. So what's that message? The library you do need, um, if we go up to, up to the top here, look, you need an HTTP client, this is Arduino speak now, okay? And you need URL encode. URL encode, we'll come on to that in a second. Right, so here's the URL, and you just string all this together. Yes, yes, yes. String's not the best thing, but it's, it's probably going to be converted into some sort of constant, I would hope, by the compiler, because it's fixed and it doesn't change again once you've done it. Anyway, it's a one-off. So what we're gonna do is call uh, call me bot, right? There's the API for it. WhatsApp, the phone, the phone number, the API key, which is what you get when you sort of register for the first time. And then you URL encode whatever message you want. Well, for me, it's, oi, your power's been left on. Go and turn it off, because I'm inside now, either having my tea or watching television, and duh, I've forgotten to turn the power off. So what we need to do then is say, right, we need an HTTP client. Um, we're going to begin this URL up here, this one here, right? So we do a begin on that. We add a header to say it's URL encoded. And then we post it, yeah, that URL. And it either works or it doesn't. And with me, it's always worked. And then we say at the bottom here, we just free up the resources and say HTTP end. And that's it. You go, hang on, surely that can't be all, Ralph. There must be some more to it. Well, no, the only bit that changes, of course, is your message, the bit that I've got hard-coded in here, because that's the only thing I want to appear on my WhatsApp. Okay, if you've got other, you know, various messages from, from well, various things that you're monitoring, obviously that's the bit that's going to change. You can just add it in the same. Um, I've just noticed, actually, that's gone off screen a bit, hasn't it? Let me just uh, bring that over. There we are. Can you see that now? So that says API key equals whatever the key is, and text equals plus the in URL encoded. That's because I'm trying to get this big enough so you can see it on screen. Because as I shrink it, you can see it. And if I try and bring it down to the next line, platform IO, in its infinite wisdom, puts it all back on one line. Ha! Huh. Anyway, that's what it looks like, okay? And that is it. That's the entire bit of code you're seeing there. There's, there's, there's no more after that. That is the bit that sends the message. Now, once you've registered your phone, and it is your personal phone, you can't go and send messages to your best mates, not without paying some money anyway. You register your phone, and he says, okay, now send me this message, and I'll give you the API key, which is absolutely essential up here. Um... That's it. You can then type that in to your browser, a bit like this. So there we are. Look, at the top, I'm going to have to zoom in on that for you. There we are. That message that you see there is exactly the same as what we just saw in the code. The difference being that you've had to now URL encode it yourself. What does that mean? Well, it means that some characters are not allowed in URL strings, like spaces. So if you look at the top here, where it says another test message. You'll see these funny little percent 20 bits in the middle. Well, percent 20 
is the URL code for a space. And you'll find there are URL codes for lots of things like brackets and backslashes and all sorts of things. And the URL encode function that you saw in that code does all that for you. Um, and it's just it's, it's just a two second substitution really of various characters. You could do it longhand if you really wanted to write out a big long table to do it, which is what I suspect the URL encode function does. Anyway, so this big long string now, the address of API called blah, blah, blah. Um, oh yes, I've had to um, blur out my phone number and the API key because obviously, A, I don't want phone calls and B, I don't want you stealing my API key. Hmm, yes. So uh, anyway, what we're going to do now is press enter and I'm going to get my phone ready and you can see the actual message turn up. OK, so there's my phone and the bottom of your screen. That's the previous test messages I sent just to make sure all this works. And that's when I noticed this little sort of nag down the bottom. You see that I need your support and basically says, can I have a very small donation? And it is small, just four euros a year four euros a year. What do you get for that? Well, you get this facility, although you get this facility for free anyway, but you don't then get this little nag thing on the bottom. You get it like it is at the top. You see all these other ones where I've left my power on? Some of the tests, some are not. So let's see what happens then when I say, go and send that message. Um, hit enter on my board. All right, hopefully I'll remember to blank out my telephone number because it says yeah you should get that in a second so just look down here and it should appear as if by magic within a few seconds anyway I might speed this bit up if it takes a while oh another test message there it is with the nag bit down the bottom so that's it and that's that proves that you're now connected doesn't it to the call me bot system and that's that's absolutely fine so let's just talk about a couple of other things about this then. OK, this is the Call Me Bot homepage, which you saw a glimpse of earlier. And it tells you on here, um, in no uncertain terms, this is for personal use only, OK? Now, personal use, I guess that means hobbyists, people like that, you know, simple little homeowners got stuff to do. That works fine. And the setup is all here as well, um, most of which we went through in Arduino speak in that code. Great. Um, how much does it cost? Well, when you get that um, message with the nag screen added to the bottom now, or the nag message added to the bottom, this is where it goes to. So we land on this page and it says, I need your support to keep it alive. So what he's saying is he rents some um, space from Amazon Web Services and things like this. And he goes, OK, you can have a demo for free. Yeah. Um, now I'm on demo at the moment, still always have been. Free period. Hmm, looks like it might end then, that free period. But anyway, the, the subscription options, as you can see, scrolling up there behind my head. So it's 40 cents a month or four euros a year, which is, well, frankly, the price of a cup of coffee, isn't it, for this service? So if you've got some ESP32s you want to send messages back to your phone for four euros a year, I don't think that should be a barrier to your accepting of this. Well, that's just my humble opinion. So, OK, that's fine. Four years a year. He does say, by the way, look, there he says, look, four is enough. But if you want to send him a bit more because you're so happy with it, do so. OK, so what happens then if you're not using this for your personal use? This is now part of a business. Perhaps you've got servers or, I don't know, bits of equipment out in the field that you want to send back messages. OK, there's a solution to that. But there are two solutions. And the first cheaper solution is Text Me Bot, which I assume, given that his site was called Call Me Bot, Text Me Bot must be related to what he's doing, or perhaps it is. His, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Anyway, the point is, um, you can have your number and send images and buttons and all sorts of things, and have a really, you know, fully fleshed out system. Uh, you get two days. Well, let's go back. Right. What he's saying is, you can have a demo for two days. And then for $6 a month, unlimited uh, recipients. Yeah, that means you can send to anybody, which is if you've got like support staff, you might want to send to lots of people, don't, wouldn't you? Um, or one recipient for $1 a month. Yay. Well, if I was a business, I know which one I'd go for. I mean, $6 a month is not the end of there, is it? Not in a business. 
and you can send messages and images and buttons as it says there and receive answers and stuff so yeah it sounds pretty good um now he says on his website the best supported one though is this one here right this is twilio and there's a whatsapp business model and the price for that is four cents per conversation yeah and it tells you what a conversation means that it says it there look you know within a 24-hour period blah 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 and you can work out how much it's going to cost you i suspect that's for more how can i put this serious businesses who really need support and everything else but you know you can move from one to the other it's just the mechanism behind it using whatsapp is absolutely great so i don't think uh, cost is going to be a barrier to other hobbyists or businesses frankly for using whatsapp and it's so much better than email now as you know i used email in my home alone system uh, where i've got devices in my mum's apartment in germany and when there's insufficient movement within that apartment over a period of time it sends out an email to me and my two brothers to say oi not a lot's happened lately check it out we look on graphs and things like that anyway the emails whilst they work took me a fair bit of time to get going and google's really awkward about getting emails working because they're not encrypted and blah 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 so this would have been an absolute godsend to have a whatsapp message and i would have paid the four euros or even six euros a month frankly um just to get it sent to various people but there we are maybe that's just me but i don't think um i don't think price or technical ability you should stop you using this because it's just so simple isn't it remember the code i'm using is in the github and the links down below okay i think we're done here really short and sweet today um i hope this has whetted your appetite in getting your esp32 or whatever processor you're using with internet access to send you messages and you can use his text me bot or no sorry call me bot uh, system first and just have all those messages come backwards and forwards and when you're sure that's working um i hope you subscribe and i've got absolutely no involvement with this whatsoever he's not not supporting this channel um i don't get any affiliate links or anything like that i just found it i stumbled across it really i'm not really even sure how i managed to do it um i guess it all started when i left the power on here just once too often but anyway I hope this has um, whetted your appetite. If you've got any comments about alternatives that you've uh, used, or whether perhaps you perhaps already use this and you think it's great or whatever, comments down below, please. Yeah, and uh, if you liked it and were entertained, sorry, edutained, then please a like up there for the hey hey yeah that's good that's good <laughs> yes. And if you like these sort of videos, don't forget. Whoop, nearly knocked the camera off. If you like these videos, you've got to subscribe and you're at the back. Yes, you've got to tick the bell. Otherwise, you don't hear from me. And that's absolute disaster. Yeah, we want to spread the world. word. Word. Um, yeah, to the world. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll see you when I get my teeth back in in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.